the law of inertia the inherent property of a body by virtue of which it resists any change in its state of rest or of uniform motion in a straight line is inertia inertia is broadly classified into three categories inertia of rest and inertia of motion and inertia of direction first is the inertia of rest inertia of rest is the tendency of a body at rest to continue to remain in a state of rest unless an external force is applied on it let us understand this with the help of an example take a glass tumbler and place a cardboard on it now place a coin on the cardboard the tumbler the cardboard and the coin are all at rest now flip the cardboard what do you observe you will notice that the coin falls vertically downwards observe that the coin does not move along with the cardboard however the coin falls downwards due to the force of gravity the coin does not move with the cardboard because of the property of inertia of rest next is the inertia of motion inertia of motion is the tendency of a body in uniform motion to continue to travel along a straight line unless an external force acts on it for example when a moving bus stops all of a sudden then the passengers tend to move in the forward direction this is because the lower part of their body which is in contact with the bus comes to rest but the upper part of the body due to the inertia of motion continues to move next is the inertia of direction inertia of direction is the tendency of a body to keep moving in a straight line unless an external force acts on it for example when a moving bus curls around a circular cut on road then the passengers tend to fall outwards this is because the passengers sitting in the bus try to maintain their direction in a straight line so from these examples we can conclude that any velocity once imparted to a body will definitely be maintained as long as there are no causes of acceleration or retardation a condition which is approached only on horizontal planes where the force of friction has been minimized let us take an example in the case of a plane which is sloping downwards there is already present a cause of acceleration in the case of a plane which is sloping upwards there is already present a cause of retardation in the case of a horizontal plane there is a constant motion